In this video, we're going to quickly review some of the manual retopology tools before we merge everything to the paint room. So let's go ahead and get started here in the layer groups panel by hiding all the current mesh layers. And I'm going to click this create new layer icon and use it for demonstration purposes. And I can hide some of these other elements in the Vox Tree layer panel that I don't necessarily need. And now I'll hit the S key to bring up the symmetry panel here and click on X axis. If you don't want this plane uh, to be visible, yet still work in symmetry mode, you can uncheck show symmetry plane. I'll turn that back on. And by default, in the retopo menu, virtual mirror mode will be checked. And what this will do is when you try and create a polygon on one side of the symmetry plane, it will show you a preview of the polygon on the opposite side. But as soon as you uncheck this, you'll see there's really nothing there. Okay, it's just a preview. And note that if you do not have invert mirror check, 3D Coat is going to assume you want to work on the positive side of the axis. And what I mean by that is, as you can see, they're color coded. So red for X, blue for Z, and green for Y. And you can see as you're working uh, which side of the axis you're on. And so again, if I do not have invert mirror checked, 3D Coat is going to assume I want to work on the positive side. So again, if I create something here, I want to make sure and turn that back on. Yeah, if I create something here and uncheck virtual mirror mode, you can see I really only have these two polygons. Now let's try and create something in virtual mirror mode. Let's try and create something on the negative side. And this is oftentimes what will happen uh, to many new users. They, they will uh, inadvertently work on the negative side and see something like that. As they create geometry or try to create geometry, they'll see nothing. And that's because if you're working on the negative side, you want to make sure and choose Invert Mirror. OK, so I'm going to uncheck that. And I can see which polygons I actually have created by clicking on this Select All Faces on Layer icon. Okay. Now, let's uncheck Virtual Mirror Mode. And let's go ahead and choose the Add Split Tool again. Create something on the positive side you'll see I get a mirrored copy. Now let's create something here on this side. And you'll notice it doesn't matter which side of the plane you're working on. 3D Coat will create a mirrored copy. And this time, instead of a preview or a virtual polygon, it's going to be a literal polygon. So if I turn the symmetry plane off temporarily, you can see it's a physical polygon there. I'll turn it back on. And also if I click select all faces, you can see it created a, a real polygon. So let's create a few more. It really does not care which side of the plane you work on. So let's say you've gotten to some point and you realize, oh, um, 
I forgot which side I'm on or regardless if you're in virtual mode or not um, if you want to create a symmetrical copy regardless just click on this little icon Okay, now you have a mirrored copy alright um, let's go ahead and connect some of these up so really again you have two different ways of working you can work in virtual mode or non virtual mode okay so uh, me myself I probably would prefer to work in non virtual mode just because uh, that way I don't really have to be concerned which side of the axis I'm on and when I see a copy on the other side it's a literal copy so let's go ahead and connect some of these up with the add and split tool and as the name would indicate it has a multi-purpose nature so essentially you can create geometry as we did here you can create quads triangles uh, even ingons if you want okay and go to the select tool and by default it will typically be in auto mode so you can just hover over the center of a polygon and you'll see it highlighted or you can hover over an edge or vertice and when you're in the select tool it will automatically switch you to that particular mode so notice when I click on the edge it now switches me to edges mode okay so one other thing I want to point out is in the e-panel here if you have a brush selected you can simply brush select multiple edges you don't have to hold the shift key or anything you can hit the escape key to drop the selection or control D um, one other option is in select mode let's uh, let's switch to vertices and uh, you can use any one of these selection types so let's use freeform mode here so I can go in and freeform lasso select multiple vertices from here there are a few things that you could do you could uh, choose the transform tool you can set a hotkey for that to make it easy to access okay. click on it and um, let's actually create something here go back to the select tool again I can paint select we'll choose vertices I can paint select all these vertices choose the transform tool and you can see by default it's in a world orientation so you can choose a local orientation by clicking on two main axis okay, and it will adopt the average of the normals of the selected uh, sub-objects such as vertices or polygons okay. so it makes it much easier to manipulate this way and you have this inner ring on your gizmo that allows you to move in screen space I'll undo that you can uh, hover over this outer ring when it's highlighted you can rotate in screen space or use any one of these widgets here rotate move along axis and uh, scale along the local axis global scale here in the very center so you can quickly exit out of the transform gizmo by hitting the escape key and again I'm going to select this polygon you just hit the delete key I'm going to go back to the add split tool and to connect these up you can hover over vertice when it's highlighted and click on it and now you can kind of see that you're in a bit of an active mode where you have a preview of an edge from point to point so 
hover over another vertice or I could hover over an edge let's highlight it and click on it go to another vertice and let's highlight it click on that same here and then finish up here All right, so let's create some more polygons let's click here and we'll connect it up here and when you have three connected edges or contiguous edges like this you can close this gap or this opening off with a polygon by clicking on the final two vertices there okay and we can do something similar here same thing here just click once click twice and 3d coat will know that that's what I want to do is I want to close that okay so you can also use this as a knife tool by hovering over an edge or a vertice and if you go from vertice to vertice 3d coat will drop you out of active mode in other words you no longer see a little preview line Okay, I'm gonna do that. But if you go from either a vertice to an edge, or or just the opposite. In other words, if I go here from one edge to another, I still have this line active. Uh, to change that, I can hit the Escape key, and I'm no longer active. That way, I can move to another vertice or edge as a starting point. And the reason for that is 3D Coat just assumes I want to continue cutting. Okay, for example, here I can click on an edge, click on this one, and you can see I'm still kind of in an active tool mode. But if I come to a vertice, okay, it closes it off, and I'm no longer in active mode. I can start over somewhere else. So let's go here. All right. One other thing you can do is on the fly move or manipulate either an edge or a vertice by right clicking. So when you hover over an edge, you can click and drag, right click and drag to manipulate it. Okay, we'll hover over a vertice, right click and drag. I think that pretty much covers the add and split tool. It's very versatile. Um, the next one we want to look at is quads, but before I do that, to draw some contrast, I want to start with points and faces. I'm going to go ahead and select all these and uh, just hit the delete key to delete them. And with points and faces, this is a, a good tool if you want to kind of plot out the construction or the layout of your polygons with points first and you can fill them in later on by hovering over the center and you'll see a preview of what that polygon selection will look like so if I right click I get just that triangle Let me undo that hover toward the center when I see the preview I can right click and I get a filled in polygon right click right click right click and so on you can quickly place these in tentative locations and you can always go back in and right click and replace them if you want to remove them all together just hover over one and when it's highlighted white you can just hit the delete key to remove it. So I'll click that again. You know, right click, right click. You can right click to move this point on the fly. You can right click over a vertice and move it. And unlike the add split tool, if I hover over an edge, I will not be able to it doesn't give me that option to move that edge, just a vertice 
I'll hover over vertice, right click, I can tweak it on the fly. Okay, so let me create one more point here. And yeah, so I find though that oftentimes while you're waiting for the preview uh, to match up with what you want, sometimes you might get something a little wonky and it's usually because of the the angle of the object beneath. If it's on a relatively flat surface, it usually doesn't have too much difficulty guessing. But when the angle changes quite a bit and you have a bit of distance, it may not be so easy to get the preview you want. So in that case, quads may be a bit more effective in that regard. So as you can see here, sometimes it may take a while to get your preview and when you're in a groove, you're really trying to work fast. Uh, sometimes this is not necessarily the best tool to use on a situation. So just keep that in mind. And so let's go ahead and use the quads tool. And it has a similar function. It allows you to lay down polygon by polygon. And how it works is instead of creating something from scratch as the add split tool does, or the uh, strokes tool. The quads tool really allows you just to build onto already existing polygons or geometry. So you come to an edge and when it's highlighted you can click on it. By default you'll have the two clicks method here. Oops. Go back to the edge that you want to start from. Click the first point and the second point. And it will connect it for you. So that's pretty good for situations where you want a little bit more precision. You can just quickly go through here and lay them down. And again, it leaves you in something of an active or preview mode and you can escape or hit the escape key you to drop that and maybe start on another edge somewhere else. Now, if you've ever done what's called strip modeling where Basically, you're just building out from an edge. You're creating a new edge and extruding it as you go. You might like the direct or parallel method. Okay, so let's try that. You click on the edge that you like. And again, you're getting a preview based on where you're placing your cursor. Studio Code is trying to find how you want to orient this edge as you place it. So it's really neat in that regard. So I can quickly just go through here and strip model very fast. And so I can go over to this other edge here and just continue to build up. I can even switch the edge on the fly just by moving and hovering over a new edge. And I can see 3D Coat will snap uh, to the edge and I can again change the orientation slightly. So really flexible in this regard. Click. So this is one of the fastest methods of uh, strip modeling I've, I've seen. Um, let's try parallel. And it's roughly the same, but it's not quite as flexible as the other method. So let's go over here. Let's hit escape. Over here, select our edge, and again, it doesn't really change the shape of the polygon too well. It's trying to follow kind of a straight line form. Now, once I see this third point connected or snapped here, then I have a little bit of leeway as to how I want to orient or change this last point. Okay, I can move it around and so on. But only once this is kind of anchored here, this third point. Let's say I want to create a triangle here. Once this third point is connected, I can just bring my cursor over to this third point and click on it and it will create a triangle. 
The last extrusion method we're going to look at is the trapezoid. And you'll find that it's practically identical to the direct method, except there is one slight difference. If you move your cursor up and down, you'll notice that the edge angle changes rather dramatically. And again, it will follow or flow a bit when you move away, but the main emphasis is really just the angle. I escape. I'm going to go to direct. As I move my cursor up, it changes angle somewhat, okay, but it's not as dramatic, and it really is just trying to flow in the direction that you're uh, creating polygons. So I'm going to escape. Again, it's very subtle, and you just have to experiment and see which method you prefer best. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is the snap force. So I'll go ahead and create a polygon here. And really, where snap force comes into play is when you see that third point, that little anchor there, the snap force will dictate how far you can move away to try and place that fourth point before this third point here pulls away assuming you're trying to go in an entirely different direction okay let escape so if you change it to a very low number you'll notice it moves off that that vertice rather quickly so you really don't have much play there uh, to move about. So that can be a little bit irritating. So if we bring it back up uh, to a higher number, let's bring it up to about 180 or so. So now it quickly snaps, but also when I move my cursor away, I've got a lot more latitude okay, to move in order to place uh, that fourth point. Okay. Pretty nice. That's going to do it for the quads tool. In the next video we're going to pick up and cover the caps tool as well as all the tweak tools here. Okay, so stay tuned.